Hello and welcome to the Arcanine Ride Scooter Garage. Uh, I've seen a few comments asking to see the garage and see each of the devices, so I figured I'd do that for you guys while I had a little break in between receiving new devices and putting out reviews. So I'm gonna look at each scooter for maybe 30 seconds, talk about what I like and dislike about it, and then that way you guys have a short version of each one of my reviews if you're interested in uh, purchasing any of these scooters. All those links and also links to each video on each individual scooter will be down in the description and some will pop up as cards up in the top right corner. So let's go. So the charging setup for these scooters you can see is pretty crude. I've just used like painter's tape to tape these little rings where I can put each respective charger end and then I have labels that show where each scooter go and I just give them their own stall based on these pre-existing uh, lines here. And then I have the ends of each charger marked with which scooter it is. So then I don't have to leave anything plugged in. I just plug in each end and can turn on the power brick and it starts charging and then I don't have to leave a bunch of stuff in and have to worry about that constantly. So back here we have the few e-bikes I have and then um, kind of the normal things that I'm taking out on a ride. Helmets, goggles, gloves, and my smaller backpacks that I can just put maybe like a lock and the stuff I'd normally put in my pockets in there. So this is the area where I work on uh, scooters and I found this stool on eBay. It's like a medical step stool and it turns out that it's the perfect height for all the scooters and it holds up to like 500 pounds so I don't have to worry about a scooter being too heavy or anything like that and I can even put a scooter up here and stand on it if I want to get a feel for it or adjust handlebars or anything without it tipping over. So you can see it's Nothing crazy, it's a modest little garage, but it holds what I need it to hold. And so now let's move on to each of the devices and I'm actually gonna pull them out in chronological order and talk about going from the first one I got to my most recent ones and talk a little bit about what I like about each one, where my current standing with each one is and whether or not I recommend any of these scooters, which ones I recommend more than others and so on. All right, so first scooter we have here is the Cabo Mantis. This is, I got this scooter probably two, two years ago I wanna say, or close to that. Um, this was the scooter that kind of started the channel. My very first upload was riding this scooter. And so I definitely have, it definitely has a, a place in my heart, but right now I don't really ride it anymore. I had a long history of issues with it. Um, if you've seen those videos then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I really, it really doesn't get touched anymore. There's a few other scooters I prefer to ride over this one. And now he just kind of sits in the garage. Um, this model was the one from Fluid Freeride. Um, I won't go into a lot of details, but I didn't have a great experience with Fluid Freeride. And so I probably won't ever buy from them again. And I believe that this version of the Mantis was only available through them. It's outdated now. so there's not really anything to recommend or not. Like it's just straight up an inferior model of the Mantis. Buy a Mantis 10 or a Mantis Pro if you're gonna buy a Mantis and you want the 10 inch wheels and the bigger size. So the next scooter we have here and the first scooter I ever got from a company to do a review for is the High Boy S2 Pro. And I genuinely really like this scooter. It's very entry level. It only does about 20 miles an hour. And, but the price is really good for what you get. And I still to this day recommend this scooter as a scooter for people who are looking for an entry level scooter. So yeah, if you want to check that one out, obviously, like I said, all the videos and links will be down in the description. And yeah, I enjoy this scooter a lot. So the next scooter we have is the Varla Eagle One. Um, I got this one right around the time I was having major issues with the Cabo Mantis. And so it came at a perfect time and I've loved it since the beginning. And this thing has taken an absolute 
beating. I mean, I've ridden this off-road. I've hit things that I thought for sure were gonna seriously damage it, and it's held on amazingly. So I've been really impressed. I have made a number of upgrades, handlebars, grips, changed out grip tape. Yeah, probably a lot of you are here because of this scooter here on the channel, and so it's definitely a highly recommended scooter from me. So yeah, go check that one out. So the next scooter that I was able to get to review um, was again another one from High Boy. This one, however, I wasn't as keen on. The handlebars were low, the suspension is really poor, the platform is way too high for such a lack of suspension, and also something that I haven't yet had to deal with but I've heard a lot of complaints about is these are inner tubed tires, but it's not a split hub. It's not a split rim. And so changing these is an absolute pain. And so my honest recommendation, especially now that I've reviewed two other scooters around this price range is to go with a different scooter. The quality is good. It's pretty fun to ride. It reaches almost 30 miles an hour. So for the price, those specs look great but it's just more hassle than it's worth. And you're gonna feel really squirrely at high speeds with this scooter. So as I was talking about scooters around that thousand dollar mark that the Titan's at, that you should get over that one. This is the first one. I said it in my review video that I sound like a shill, but I absolutely love this scooter. I think this is the answer to so many scooter riders like question like which scooter I should get. The price is amazing, the speed is good, the quality has been fantastic, it looks good, it's fairly portable. This is the scooter that I've been grabbing lately more than any other scooter, you know, to ride around and have fun, to ride down to the grocery store, to ride down to get myself a snack, to if I need to take the train somewhere, this is the one I always bring on the train, and it gets me where I need to go. Uh, quickly, um, but it's not over the top fast where I feel like I need a full face helmet. It's, it's just right in that perfect balance of everything and it's so affordable and I can't say enough how much I like this scooter and until something changes my mind, this is going to be the scooter I recommend for most people. Next scooter here is the Dualtron Victor and this is one I was... Um, a little disappointed in, not disappointed, lukewarm with when I received it. It was an extremely fun scooter to ride, but I was having issues with tires going flat and with the front handlebars coming, like installed at a bit of an angle. Anyway, I've, I'm gonna do a full review on this and talk about this more in detail, but after the upgrades I've made, this scooter is so much fun. I love this scooter this this thing is an absolute blast like when i just want to fly and go as fast as possible this is the scooter i pick up and the more i ride it and the more time i've put into upgrading it the more i love it and can recommend it okay this is the high boy nex5 another one from high boy this is another one i'm not a huge fan of to be honest the price is, with my discount code, I think it's $650, so the price isn't awful, but this is essentially a rental scooter. You're gonna get almost exact same performance out of a rental scooter. The nice part is the removable battery, but overall, it's just so chunky. It's obnoxiously heavy, and if you want something with similar performance that is more friendly to a normal consumer, then you should definitely go with the S2 Pro. Or this one retails at $750 and like if you're looking around that $1,000 mark, I know this is a little bit less than $1,000, but if you're looking at that $1,000 mark, like I said, the Cabo Mantis 8 is just strictly the better option in just about every scenario I can think of and you'll be really glad you got a faster scooter. So, And finally, my most recent scooter, the Varla Pegasus, this one sits around that $1,000 mark too. and this is closer to the Cabo Mantis 8 in terms of performance and bang for the buck than the Titan. Right now, I lean a little bit towards the Cabo Mantis 8 if you're looking for a scooter in this range, 
but I've really been enjoying riding the scooter. And my range test for this just barely came out as well as my first impressions, so go check those out. After I release a full review, I will do a direct comparison between the Mantis 8 and the Varla Pegasus and give my consensus. These, this does have a few things going for it over the Mantis 8, specifically um, speed and it's a little bit longer but anyway i'll break down those better when i have when i make that video in the future sweet well thanks for checking out my garage today and checking out all these scooters and if you like any of these any of the ones i recommended then they'll be down in the description as well as on my website so go ahead and check that out arcanineRides.com, and i will see you in the next video